Hello and welcome to Shaven Butcher's Wet Shaving Channel. I'm starting today with two, two jokes about elephants sent in by viewers. I want to warn the audience that these jokes are horribly bad, worse than you're used to. Um, so, so there you go. The, the viewers who sent them in thought them fitting when I accused them of being bad. So here we go. The first one is from Samuel over in Australia. Why are elephants, why do elephants have wrinkles? Because they don't fit on an ironing board. The second one is from Ace back over in Sheffield in England. This morning I shot uh, an elephant in my pajamas. How he got into my pajamas, I do not know. So there you go. Okay, over and done with. The uh, the reason for the shave today, other than that phenomenal piece of comedy art, is uh, that we have a new razor in the den. I'm really excited. I won this one in a raffle. I very rarely take parts in raffles. Take part in raffles, but. This caught my eye, so I decided to join and I won, which I'm not sure I've ever won in a raffle before. I'm sure I have, but I can't remember. This is Japanese, a Baba racer, Swedish steel, new highest steel. Um, so it's a Baba 662, is it? And look at the look at the condition that is in. I won it from Oscar Protiva. Who has nothing but good stuff so I shouldn't be surprised and I am not surprised um, that's the other side of it so it says for barbers use first quality very good uh, looks about six eighths it's a full hollow racer with uh, some pretty cool scales original of course it says baba on them so that's what we're using as a shaving tool oh, i pulled my back horribly up here so i may moan my wife thinks i'm a a wimp but then i don't remind her what she's like when she has the flu so <laughs> there you go okay we won't argue she's not here to defend herself a soap which is made for over a hundred years, not too far away from Aceback. This is also Yorkshire in England. This is Mitchell's Wool Fat, made in Bradford, where they they have uh, probably the best curry, so Indian Pakistani food in Britain, and they're famous for that. And they're famous not at all from Mitchell's Wool Fat, uh, except for the geeky nerd community that you lot and myself are in. Um, I wanted to use a brush that I got off Oscar as well. This is this is my first sort of nice brush that I ever ever got to bore it from him. It's been soaking for a good while. It's a two-band bore, uh, two-band badger made by Jeff Anderson over in America. It's a GA7. I think it just looks terrific. I think it's a beautiful looking brush and it's really good. To be honest, you know, I don't think I have. I have similar brushes or brushes that are similar quality, <clears throat> but nothing's really better than this. Okay, lathering up, Mitchell's wool fat. Feels like I, it wasn't a long time I, since I used this. So sorry about that, I just felt like Mitchell's, Mitchell's wool fat which is a, a fat made from wool from the sheepy sheep. It's very fitting to Samuel as well, because in Australia there are a few people and very many, very many sheep. I've seen that on television. <laughs> Have you seen the, the new commercial for the, the, the boots from Australia, R.W. Williams or R something Williams. 
anyway, quite faint. I don't have any, so I don't know the name. <laughs> Hugh Jackman, who is obviously Australian, he makes the advert for them. You should, you should take a look. It came up as I was watching something on YouTube today. So, um, yeah, you check it out. But he was told to wear nothing but these Williams boots. And that's all he wore. And, you know, it's blurred, so don't get too carried away. I know he's a, he's a handsome man, according to a lot of people. I think so, too. Someone said, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. We have to change your appearance. That is a compensation. You can choose who you want to look at. And you'll just look at that person and we'll kill off whoever it is you choose. I don't fantasize about these things too often. But then, you know, you Jackman would be a candidate. You know, I'd, I'd be okay looking like that. Especially if he was dead, so I could claim his movies. But of course, we we don't wish Hugh Jackman dead. That's not at all what I meant. This isn't thought through. This is just stuff that appears in my in my head. And and I do apologize. I should put a a disclaimer at the beginning of the video. So some unprepared rambling nonsense. may take place like offending a whole city in the northwest of of England which is stupid because it's a city that I think is quite nice I don't know I just get started and then continues okay so I loaded this brush well quite a bit pretty much like I, I usually load soaps but it's which is quite heavily but I, it is, this is one so far. You want to do it properly. And then I just, I have a reasonably dry brush and I just paint this in until all the, the bubbles are gone because you, you get a, quite a bit of this. It's a frothy lather to start with. So it's all, that's all gone. It's looking and feeling, not cakey, but almost toothpastey. And then I start adding water. And this is a soap you can, you can destroy by getting the moisture content wrong. I'm letting the faucet run. It's a bit of a racket, but then I don't have to turn it on and off, which is annoying for you as well. Okay, we'll, we'll see if we've got enough there. I've been using bore brushes. Well, I only have two quite a bit lately. And then you really have to overload like crazy that's a good start that could be enough we could need more but it the lather is translucent which which is a good starting point so then I use a bit of aggression the knot on this one is really good compact but not too thick and really soft soft but it has a character not a pushover, you know what I mean? Yeah, Mitchell's Wolf Fat is, uh, is a soap which you, you should perhaps only get if you enjoy lathering, because it takes a bit of time. I can shave with this, it's slick as it is. But it takes a bit of time to get it to a good consistency. Then again, you can play around with it and you can have it thin or thick. The trick is to get the hydration right. And obviously any moisture you put in, you really have to work it into the lather. Otherwise it, it will break. Break a bit like a sauce. I don't know what the expression is in English, but certain sauces break apart. Like, how I say? In Swedish. It's not quite the same with the soap. Here you go. A little bit like that. So you want to be careful with the water, but you do need quite a bit. 
So that looked like proper proper moisture content for a while, but then you keep working it and it goes a little bit on the dry side. So I'm gonna add some more. It's good leather for a lot of folks, but I, I want it slicker. And I have soap in my mouth, which I'm, I apologize. Not a bad taste. It's not a bad taste at all. It's just, you know, I'd rather not have soap in my in my mouth. So we're gonna paint some water in, see if we get to that creamy consistency. You could use aggression as well. But just painting it in is, is quite nice. So you don't get it too damn thick. Mm, starting to get there. Oh, sorry, bear with me. But if we get it right, it's all worth it. It's going almost translucent again. So this is this is where where you could break it a little bit. Let's see if we've got it or or if we push too far. So you see it's quite a bit thinner than it was a minute ago. This is where you should do two videos. Part one, lathering and, and bullshit. Part two, shaving and crap. I think we're doing well. I think this is good. Nice and thin. Did you see the difference? Well, if you were paying attention, you can see the difference. I went from really thick, really big to quite thin. There are a few bubbles and the bubbles could mean it's overhydrated, but I think we're good. I think we're good in terms of slickness and that's what we need for this beauty. So it's the virgin shave for me with this razor. Oscar cleaned it up very nicely. I mean, it's looking like new old stock, it really is. And he put, puts an edge on it. And he said it's sharp enough. Let's see if it's smooth enough. Well, we won't know until the second pass, will we? See, the bubbles were okay. Sometimes you get those, you know, you know it's a good lather and you get the bubbles and you know they're not supposed to be there. But they very rarely appear to make any difference. And, you know, these bubbles came up because I added a lot of water to a lather that was actually perfectly ready. I just want, want it really slick. I really, really wet. This thing where it falls off the racer, I'm not even moving the racer, so it's falling off. That's, you know, part of it is the aesthetic attraction of of it you know it comes off it's not runny but it comes off straight away so that's part of it and it's a bit of i was there before i promise i, I got cut that open yesterday or actually i didn't cut it it's a spot of a spot of bother the racer's doing really well so far 
but most most racers are on the first pass if you go with the green yeah <laughs> there's something about Japanese racers and, and maybe especially Japanese racers with Swedish steel I don't know what else they put in them Japanese steel I guess There's something about the design which is nice. Quite simple. No unnecessary knurling or decoration. I mean the the traditional Japanese racers, which are often called kamasoris, are uh, but I think kamasori is just shaving blade, shaving knife in Japanese. I'm not quite sure. I think so. Anyway, we call them kamasori. They are beautiful and, and, and made to look a bit spectacular. And you work the, the thread and the, the ribbons on the handle and you really decorate it. So that's a different thing. But the Western style, I think that's a pretty, I think that's a pretty decent lather. If I may say so myself, that I made from the Bradford stuff. Yeah, the traditional uh, Western style, so I should say rather, Japanese races are, are quite simple in their appearance and they do look similar. I don't know the, the nomenclatura, the Tanfuji and the whatever they're called. So I don't exactly know what that means either. There are lots of experts into Japanese racers. Okay, let's see. Against the grain. Yeah, cuts nicely. Good job, Oscar. Going a bit slow, the right hand today. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Stupid thing, you know, you have to shave for three days for it to heal properly. I just don't want to do that. good. Excellent. Excellent reason. It's straight. It's, you know, it's a matter of how they shave, but it's also a matter of what they look like and what they feel like and what history they have and you know because I I have to admit I generally get slightly better or slightly more eff effective and closer shaves with the two shave vets that I have than with the straight racers with a few exceptions But I still use straights a lot, more than the shavet. Because they're, there's something about them. And it's not the stropping, I hate stropping. Oops, might have got on my lip there. I don't know, felt like. Look at those bubbles. Huh. Ah, oh, 
hands are quite shaky today. Happens. Tired. It's late at night. I generally sh shave very late at night. It's just, I don't have to save any time of the day, but, but I, I do. And you know, I know why it's because everyone else is in bed. So there's peace and quiet. Even if you close the door to, to the space where you're shaving, you know, if you have people outside and they're walking and they're watching television or whatever they're doing, it's still a little bit annoying, isn't it? Okay, let's do the neck. Oh, the new Borat film is, I don't know where it's, premiering. That doesn't sound like English. But we've got to watch that. Does everyone know Borat or is that a European thing? I mean, is he, is he well known in the US? I guess so. That's where the first film was made 14 years ago, I think. <laughs> and, you know, there was a discussion on, on cult to cultural television just now about the cultural and geopolitical and, and so forth uh, impact that the first Borat film had. Which I didn't quite realize that he, yeah, he caused a little bit of a international drama where, you know, the people of Kazakhstan were saying, no, he's not, he's not from Kazakhstan. Not like the poster boy, is he? And of course, we know he's from stains, stains in it. Okay, T to get that reference, you have to watch the actor's previous character, Ali G. He's from stains, stains in it. That was quite nice. I'm not going to do pickups because I want to see what the result was like with just the two pass shape. I'm going to rinse and revert. We did well, we did a good job. This was the beauty, the so-called star of the show, the Baba Racer, Japanese full hollow with Swedish steel, made from Swedish steel. We used, we used the George Jeff Anderson brush and a bit of Mitchell's wool fat and this is what Mitchell's wool fat looks like it's it's a nice lather is it the best soap in the world I'm not saying it is but it's pretty darn good thanks for watching bye bye stay sharp